welcome to exhibition. And hello, Diana Watson. Good morning, Richard. Thank you for having me. Delighted to see you there. And uh, your exhibition is the Anthophile Collective at M Contemporary in Sydney. Um, and let's begin with that wonderful word, anthophile. What is an anthophile? Isn't it a marvellous word? It is an insect that is, is attracted to flowers and or human beings who love flowers. I was so excited when I found this word. <laughs> Well, let's hope there are uh, many anthophiles, particularly <laughs> of the human variety, coming to this <laughs> exhibition because it is so focused on flowers. How did you come to develop that uh, fascination with the floral form? Well, I think Mother Nature's always been an inspiration for me and she never draws the ro a wrong line. She just does everything beautifully. So she's a very good inspiration. Can you think back, though, to, in terms of your art practice, what it was that, that drew you to the flower as a form to be portrayed by you? Well, simply, the, the, it's the ultimate beauty. I mean, there's nothing more wonderful than flowers. And they're just out there asking to be painted. Um, I probably started with still life. And uh, it was a natural progression, yes, of flowers. How did you come to develop the scale of these flowers because they are large and much greater than life size. So as an anthophile, one is able to be drawn right into them. Yes, well, I love painting large. I mean, there's nothing more exciting than a blank, huge canvas to attack. So I just, that's how I love to paint. What are the practical challenges of that uh, for you to maintain a, a sense of integrity through the work, but also such a, a depth of detail? Well, I do use photography, but it has to be my own. So, um, of course, it takes me longer to paint a flower than the flower will survive just sitting in front of me. So I need to have a reference and I scale it up to the big size. How do you source and decide on the type of flowers that you are using in these works? Well, with a great amount of difficulty, because I live in an apartment without a garden, but somehow or other, I just seem to walk past the florist shop and see just the perfect flower or order them or friends give me flowers. Um, it's a continual challenge, I might add, to find the, you know, the perfect bloom, yes. Well, if it's a challenge, what is it that you're looking for to find the perfect bloom? What are the qualities that you are seeking? Well, I love overblown roses, ones that are on their last legs. Um, and, I mean, the beauty in those is just indescribable. So they just have to be photographed and then painted. The qualities uh, in the paintings, uh, in those flowers in the paintings, seem at least in part to be a a sensuality, perhaps even a seductiveness. Um, are those the qualities you're trying to put there or, or can, you, can you give us the qualities that, that you're trying to give? Well, um, I don't think I started out to do that, but you're not the first person to mention it. So, um, I don't know, I think it's just simply the way I paint, you know, it's what comes out. Um, and if that's what people perceive it to be, that's wonderful. Let's go back uh, to your earlier art history and, and training. Give us a little bit of a, of a sense of what the history of your art practice has been and your art training. Well, I was so lucky to have Robert Juniper as my art teacher at school. Um, I think most people know of Robert, even though he's West Australian. Um, and he actually said to my mother, she must continue with an art career which I went on to do commercial and fine art in Perth. Um, but really painting like this, um, I started once my children had grown up. So there's, there's a message to young women struggling with little children. There is life after children. And that's what I found. Yeah. Speaking of uh, women artists, there are some that you have uh, in your writing uh, referenced as being influential. Uh, all the way back to the 17th century uh, Dutch female painter Rachel Roysch. 
um, and also uh, a nod to Georgia O'Keeffe and her flower paintings. Can you describe how those types of artists have influenced you? Well, Rachel just, um, I think she managed to grasp a feminine version of the same subject that all the Dutch masters, the men were painting, but she managed to do it in a very feminine way. There's also um, an Italian woman called Garzoni who did the most wonderful still life. And she also um, was obviously just painting things around her, but she did them, I can see, in such, with a feminine touch. And I think maybe that's what I managed to do. <laughs> there also seems to be a European sensibility to many of the works, uh, not least uh, of which um, is underlined by the, some of the Italian or Sicilian uh, place names in some of the titles. Can you, can you explain that link to us? Well, the link mainly is my grandmother, who was Italian, um, but I'm an Italophile from way back. I just love landing in Fumicino Airport. So can you take us, for example, with one particular work, can you take us to um, Ortigia Markets? Well, that's on the top of my travel list. Um, I haven't been there and I'm just dying to get on a plane and go. <laughs> it's a wonderful little island off Syracuse. Um, and I've just been looking at pictures of it and reading about it. It's very historical. Um, I think it would be a wonderful place to visit. And another island uh, is Salina, uh, also a, an Italian island. Yes, that's right. It is. Um, I've been reading The Leopard, which is a book about Sicily, and there's a character in it called Selena as well, I've been, re I realise, as the island. So whichever you choose is just fine. Both sound wonderful. Do you feel a, a link between the nature of the works and the nature of the flowers and those places that you choose to associate them with? Oh, definitely. Yes, I, I can read a book about Italy and take myself there and sort of extract um, inspiration from just thinking about those places. And I have spent a lot of time in Italy, um, so that all, of course, helps. But, yeah, continual inspiration. The work Ocular One uh, is interesting in, in that it's a painting within a painting. And, uh, and we see um, insects and even a snail on the edge <laughs> of what appears to be a painting in your painting. Yes. Can you share your creative process and, uh, and principle behind that? Well, it was just another idea that I had. When you have an idea, you've got to paint it. And so um, I guess thoughts like that, I have them brewing for quite a long time before I actually find a time and the right place to produce them. But I've obviously been thinking about it for a long time, particularly the insects, yeah. How do you hope that viewers in the gallery, faced with these huge and beautiful flowers, how do you hope that they will respond? Well, I must say the nicest thing anybody says to me about my paintings when they bought them is they give them joy every time they walk past them. So that's all I want is to make people happy looking at my work. Do you have a sense of, of what you think is an ideal environment for your paintings to live in? Um, not really, although sometimes when I'm thinking about what to paint and I see a lovely room in a magazine or something, I imagine my painting in that room, um, it's quite often exactly the opposite to what I might be painting it. So yes, I do think of what rooms they may end up, but I'm never concerned about where people put them. <laughs> and in terms of rooms associated with the paintings, uh, what is your creative space, your studio like to make these paintings? Well, I've always painted from home. I, um, I guess I've just simply had enough room to do it there and it makes life easier. Um, we live in an apartment now in Kirribilli and um, I've taken up most of the apartment. 
<laughs> with, for painting, I've got a lovely room out where I'm sitting now, and you can barely see the walls or the apartment for paintings, uh, but it is a very nice place to paint and sort of, um, I would I love a huge studio, of course, but this really works for me. Over a period of time, have your paintings changed or evolved in a, in a way that's significant to you? And what would you see as the next step in the evolution of your work? Oh, well, that's a very good question. I, I hope the next step will be better than the last. <laughs> that I just achieved to, to get better. Well, that's a very positive note on, on which to conclude. So, Diana Watson, thank you very much indeed for sharing your exhibition with us. Richard, thank you so much. <laughs>